Right, so this video is all about my Scott Foil. Now, I've ridden 2,000 K on it, so not a crazy amount, but a decent amount to get a little bit of a gist of what the bike is about. Now, we're going to go through good things first, bad things second. Good things. Geometry is actually aggressive. You can see, like, I've done a bit slammed, uh, but it is very, very long, this bike, very low, so ideal from Scott. None of this messing around with a not aero, with a non aggressive aero bike, so big fan of that. Second thing that I do enjoy, it is fast in a straight line. Obviously, this is just sensation based. Do aero bikes feel fast? Yeah. Can you tell the difference between them? No. Does this feel quicker than my old Canyon? No. But, you know, when you get on it, you're like, yeah, it's got some gas. Three, stiffness handling, it just works. You know, I'm not big, obviously, so no stress about stiffness generally, but obviously, I do like it quite a lot in the way it handles and all the rest of it. Other good things, I reckon the last good thing we'll go on is the cable routing. Very easy, I built this bike myself, except the hydraulics from my friend who just did the last bit of connecting it all and bleeding, because I hadn't done that before. But in terms of routing the cables, it's so easy. Um, obviously I'm on DI2, but this frame set is only DI2 or ETAP, so ETAP even easier. Um, but the routing for the DI2, the battery is just down here, cable out here, and then cable goes to the rear mech. I didn't even use a cable routing kit. For the rear one, the hose, you just push it all the way through, it comes up at the fork, and again, uh, sorry, it comes up where like where the fork steerer would go, and then the, fork, the front fork, also real easy. So, routing wise, building this yourself, very, very easy. But what I think is the best part is the handlebar setup, the way you can run a normal stem if you want. Okay, it has to be a Scott stem, but still you can run like a, a normal bar and stem combo, so it doesn't have to be integrated. So, you'll see on mine, it's, it's actually like not internal through the bars at all, so you can change the bars easily. I think stuff like that is really good because you can have it integrated if you want, super, super aero. If you want a little bit more adjustability, you can do that. So I actually think that's good. It means I can pick 36 centimeter bars and 130 mil stem, uh, which obviously is not too common on integrated bar and stem. So if it was only that, um, you know, that would be a bit annoying. Okay, what's the downsides of this bike? I can downside, obviously weight. It is hefty. Currently set up, this is eight kilos. Um, okay, there's some heavy things on this bike, like my, my 56 tooth chainring, but otherwise, and bar and stem, but there's not like a lot that you're like, oh, that's mega heavy. And this is obviously a small frame, it's a 49 centimeter frame. So again, that is not great, but you know, it is what it is, it's an aero bike. I think we can get it to seven and a half, change wheels um, and do some other stuff. But yeah, again, not, not the best. I'd say otherwise, it just doesn't, that kind of makes it feel not like great climbing. And again, what's the real world impact of this? Minimal how the bike makes you feel when you get on a climb it's not like wow i really want to whack it it's just kind of like it feels a bit mad and i'd say that's kind of the biggest like i would say disappointment because i knew that when i bought the bike what it's going to be like but it's definitely not like is different to a full-on climbing bike which is mega mega light so i reckon that's probably like the main kind of downside other downside cost is mentally expensive the frame the frame says like three and a bit which is so much money is it worth it i don't know uh like it kind of is it kind of isn't um so the conclusion of this of this review is would you should you buy a scott foil i would say it depends if you commit to getting an aero bike i think it is a good option the tour magazine the german lot they do loads of aero tests and it seems quick um it's got better adjustability than canyon so i probably would go in that sense obviously canyon is slightly lighter but i do think in general it's a good bike but it's what you expect there's nothing kind of unknown about it uh, in my opinion i just think it's like got good geometry easy to set up with handlebars and stuff seems fast enough seems stiff it just works um so yeah that's kind of my review of the frame uh other stuff to mention power near quark it is good first time on the quark it seems to work maybe it's a little bit high but that's good for morale di2 obviously just good and the disc brake stuff um not too bad actually i've managed to bleed it all and all the rest of it i haven't had too much issues and i'm a useless mechanic so i actually think it's not not too bad going on to all that stuff but anyway hunt wheels Distinctly average, I don't think there's anything special about them. They're just like 50 mil, 1500 grams, 1k for that. It's not great. They came with my old bike, hence why I'm riding them, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go out and buy them. I just think they're pretty average. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, so, anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video about the foil. I'll see you in the next one.